Joining us now from outside the Stormont Parliament in Belfast is political commentator Ken Murray. Ken Murray, thank you for talking to us today. Ian Paisley has said today Northern Ireland has finally come to a time of peace. But we've been here many times before in the past. What makes today different? Well, I suppose if Ian Paisley says we've arrived at a time of peace, then we really have, because he has traditionally represented the extreme party here in Northern Ireland, the pro-British Democratic Unionist Party. They've been very critical of Sinn Féin and its paramilitary wing, the IRA, and uh, were very critical indeed of any attempt by the government in the south of Ireland, in Dublin, to get involved in Northern Irish affairs. And what we saw down through the years was that the Democratic Unionist Party had been making a number of demands on the pro Irish Sinn Féin party for its paramilitary wing, the IRA, for example, to hand in its weapons. Reporter Ken Murray is there with the latest. Ken, good news, of course, for holidaymakers planning to leave tomorrow. But what is going on with regard to Belfast? Well, at present, no. Talks are taking place here in the Labour Court here behind me with uh, representatives of the Irish Airline Pilots Association and the Labour Relations Commission. And this relates to working patterns and indeed pay rates for pilots in Aer Lingus based at Belfast and Gatwick. There is clearly a differential between pilots based in Belfast and Gatwick and those in Dublin and Cork. So the talks got underway about an hour ago and could run for the next couple of days. So everybody's going to be keeping a close eye on that weather forecast over the next day or two. Well, such has been the deterioration of the weather here in Dublin that the airport here is now closed until 8 o'clock tonight and the likelihood is it will be closed for the entire night. Now, Aer Lingus has cancelled all its flights inbound and outbound, as has uh, Ryanair and Aer Rientha, so, or sorry, Aer Arran. And if anybody is indeed travelling from Northern Ireland down to Dublin uh, to pick up friends or relatives, they should be uh, mindful of the fact that some flights into Dublin have been diverted to Shannon Airport in County Clare and Belfast International Airport. So the advice there is to check the websites of the various uh, respective airlines. Incidentally, if anybody is travelling from the north to Dublin, from about mid-Louth into Dublin, traffic is travelling at a rate of about 20 miles per hour. And at present, there is a tailback of about four miles of traffic on the way into Dublin here on the M1. Incidentally, such has been the bad weather here in the Republic that today in County Donegal, fuel had to be rationed in Guidor and Goethe Hawk because... Uh, tankers have been unable to get to service stations. So, uh, all in all, it looks like a very, very bad night indeed. And for what it's worth, by the way, uh, Met Aaron has been saying that this has been the worst period of snowfall since January 1963. And that's the latest from Dublin Airport. Ken Murray battling the elements like everyone now else. On the line from Dublin is Independent Network News political correspondent Ken Murray. Ken, was this necessary? Well, this has been coming quite a long time. I mean, Aer Lingus has reached a stage where it's got about 60 destinations. It's got a fleet size of about 36 aircraft. And what um, the company wants to do is expand. It wants to open up routes to the Middle East, to Africa, to the likes of Beijing and Malaysia. And, of course, the EU, United States uh, skies policy is going to be changed next year. And that will give Aer Lingus something like five extra routes uh, in the United States. Well, joining me in the studio tonight is the journalist Ken Murray to talk through the papers. Good to see you, Ken. Good to see you, um, Matt. We're going to start with The Guardian. The stop and search powers are always a contentious story. What's The Guardian's take on this? Right. Well, there were stop and search powers of some form here in Britain some time ago, but uh, the European Court banned the stop and search powers that were part, I think it was Section 44 of the Terrorism Act uh, some years back, and uh, the police now are saying, look, we need powers to stop and search people that we think uh, may be up to no good. And what seems to be driving this desire to bring back the stop and search powers is the uh, emergence of the Olympic Games. There's going to be a lot of people coming to London, a lot of people coming to Britain, and some people with terrorism on their mind may use the Olympic Games as an opportunity to come to Britain uh, and carry out some uh, evil deeds. Now, the police are saying that uh, they need the powers if they think person X or person Y is up to no good. The problem is that all sorts of uh, human rights groups believe that this is an infringement of human rights and that, therefore, the 
the uh, decision made by the European Court some time back should stay. So <clears throat> I think this is going to be a contentious issue uh, in the next uh, two years or so as the police request these stop and search powers and human rights groups would say, well, look, the European Court has ruled on this. There's not a lot you can do. I'm Ken Murray and this is Later on 10. With us tonight, we'll be talking to Andrew Hunter of the Conservative Backbench Committee on Northern Ireland. Andrew Hunter, if I can turn to you, why is it necessary for the IRA to hand in their weapons? Because if we want to build a new Northern Ireland, an agreed Ireland, the prerequisite is that all political parties are totally committed to peace and democracy. Yes, but isn't this whole business a bit of a red herring? Because if the IRA handed in their weapons on a Monday, Sinn Féin joined the Assembly on a Tuesday, the IRA could go out on Wednesday and buy the same amount of guns that they'd handed in on the Monday. So doesn't that make it sort well, of a, a mockery of the whole thing? I don't think that is the case. It is easier said than done. Yes, but if I can cut across you there, I mean, this didn't happen in South Africa when the ANC went into government, didn't happen in the Lebanon, uh, the Basque separatists are in no rush to hand in their weapons. Why is the Irish situation so different? Well, I don't think there are precise parallels between any of those which you gave and the situation in Northern Ireland. In Northern Ireland, the ballot box prevails. Murray reports from Dublin. The collapse of Fianna Fáil's poll ratings from 41 to just 14 percent has left worried backbench TDs believing that a new leader is necessary to save the party from freefall. Brian Cowan called for the vote of confidence in his leadership after consulting with parliamentary colleagues last week. However, Michal Martin said at the weekend that a significant number of TDs had approached him calling for change at the top. What makes this vote tonight somewhat bizarre is that Michal Martin offered his resignation as foreign minister to Brian Cowan, who insisted he remain on in cabinet. Whatever the outcome this evening, Fianna Fáil looks set to enter the forthcoming general election as a divided party. Ken Murray, BBC Newsline, Dublin.